Imagine the stir that a single piece of papyrus could cause. In 2012, a discovery shook the foundations of Christian theology to its core. Our story begins with Karen King, a respected scholar at the Harvard Divinity School. She electrified the world with her announcement of a remarkable discovery, a scrap of papyrus that came to be known as the Gospel of Jesus' Wife. This wasn't just any historical artifact. The fragment, small yet potent, carried a message that upended traditional narratives. It suggested the possibility that Jesus had a wife and that women, contrary to long-held beliefs, could be disciples. The implications were profound, challenging centuries of doctrinal teachings and sparking debates among theologians, historians and believers alike. But the gospel of Jesus' wife was more than a curiosity for scholars. It fed into King's research interests, dovetailing with her work on recovering the original Mary Magdalene and advocating for women in early Christianity. It's easy to see how this groundbreaking artifact, if authentic, could have been a game changer. Yet, as the world grappled with the implications of this discovery, a storm was brewing behind the scenes. The fragment, hailed as a revolutionary piece of history, was about to become the epicentre of a scandal that would shake the academic world. Little did the world know, this groundbreaking revelation was merely the beginning of a much larger, scandalous tale. The suspicions began to creep in, casting long shadows over the credibility of the Gospel of Jesus' wife. As the academic world marvelled over Harvard Divinity School scholar Karen King's revelation of a papyrus fragment suggesting Jesus had a wife, a cloud of doubt began to form. The legitimacy of the so-called Gospel of Jesus' wife was called into question. The words inked on this ancient scrap were audacious, daring and to some a little too convenient. A narrative of a married Jesus and the inclusion of women as his disciples was precisely the kind of narrative that King had been advocating for. The scholarly community began to scrutinise the fragment more closely. It wasn't long before the truth unveiled itself. The Gospel of Jesus' Wife, it turned out, was a modern-day forgery. A devastating blow to King and her research, but an even greater blow to the integrity of academic research. Journalist Ariel Sabar played a crucial role in this unravelling. His relentless pursuit for the truth led him to uncover the fragment's dubious ownership history. It was a spider's web of deception, with strands leading back to a single architect, the mastermind behind this elaborate hoax. The forger was none other than Walter Fritz, a man of complex background and a history of financial struggles. Fritz was no stranger to venturing into grey areas, having dabbled in auto parts, dealing and internet pornography. He had expertly targeted King, capitalising on her prominence in the field and her passionate beliefs. Yet, the motives behind King's decision to support the fragment remained shrouded in mystery. The timing of her announcement coincided with a period of scrutiny faced by Harvard's Divinity School. Harvard President Drew Faust did not dispute this timing, adding another layer of intrigue to the unfolding saga. With the truth revealed, the focus shifted to the architect behind this elaborate hoax. At the heart of the scandal was a man named Walter Fritz. A figure of intrigue, Fritz was a man who found himself in the throes of financial struggle. His past was a patchwork of endeavours, each more peculiar than the last. From trading auto parts to dabbling in the shadowy realm of internet pornography, Fritz's history was as complex as the forgery he would later mastermind. But why did he target Karen King, a respected scholar at Harvard Divinity School? To understand this, we must delve into the motivations that drove Fritz. King was a prominent figure in her field. Her work focused on a noble cause, the recovery of the original Mary Magdalene and advocating for women in early Christianity. Fritz, in his cunning, saw in King a perfect target. Her beliefs, her prominence and her passion made her susceptible to his grand deception. Fritz's motivations, however, were not purely academic or ideological. The lure of financial gain was a powerful force. The promise of wealth that could be gleaned from such a sensational discovery was undoubtedly a driving factor. The Gospel of Jesus' wife would indeed be a lucrative find, and Fritz, with his keen understanding of the market's appetite for such artefacts, was well-placed to exploit this. 
Yet, there was more to Fritz's actions than simple financial desperation. This was a man who had been involved in a myriad of ventures, each one seemingly more audacious than the last. The forging of the papyrus was not merely a get-rich-quick scheme, it was a calculated move within a larger game. Fritz had the audacity to forge a piece of history, to rewrite the narrative in a way that would shake the foundations of religious scholarship. But what about Karen King? How did a respected scholar fall for such an audacious forgery? Our journey into unravelling this mystery continues. Karen King, a reputed scholar, unwittingly found herself at the centre of this scandal. A name of high regard in the academic circle of Harvard Divinity School, she was known for her in-depth understanding and passion for religious studies. King's scholarly pursuits often led her towards the exploration of the role of women in the early Christian era. She was particularly fascinated by the figure of Mary Magdalene, striving to unveil the original portrayal of this biblical character, often shadowed by centuries of interpretation and misinterpretation. Her research was not limited to this area, though. King was also a vocal advocate for women's place in the early Christian church, pushing against long-held patriarchal narratives. Her work was a beacon of hope for many seeking to find their reflection in the religious texts, often dominated by male voices. This was a scholar who was not afraid to challenge traditional beliefs to question the established norms. It was this very passion, this unwavering commitment to her cause, that made her an ideal target for Walter Fritz's scheme. Fritz, with his complex background and desperate financial situation, saw in King a perfect opportunity. He identified her fervor for the subject, her readiness to accept and promote the idea of a more gender-balanced narrative in Christianity, and he exploited it. But Fritz was not just any forger. He was a master manipulator, knowing exactly how to play his cards. He presented King with a fragment that not only aligned with her beliefs, but also promised to be a groundbreaking discovery. It was a tantalizing proposition, one that was too compelling to dismiss outright. King's decision to support the fragment, the so-called Gospel of Jesus' Wife, is still shrouded in mystery. Was it her genuine belief in the authenticity of the fragment? Or was it an attempt to bring attention to the cause she was so deeply invested in? The exact motives remain unclear. The scandal left a mark on King's reputation, but the story doesn't end there. The fallout from the scandal was immense casting a shadow over King's illustrious academic career. Yet, this was not the final chapter in the saga of the Gospel of Jesus' Wife. The intrigue continues, and as we delve deeper into the aftermath, we will uncover more layers of this complex and captivating story. The exposure of the forgery had far-reaching implications. Indeed, the fallout was immense. The scandal shook the very foundations of Karen King's career. Once a respected scholar at the Harvard Divinity School, she found her credibility severely compromised. The discovery of the forgery not only cast a shadow on her reputation, but also tarnished the image of the institution she represented. Harvard's Divinity School was suddenly under intense scrutiny. Questions were raised about the school's academic rigor and integrity. The timing of King's announcement was deemed suspicious, coinciding with a period when the school was facing criticism. Was this an attempt to divert attention or merely a coincidence? The truth remains obscured in the labyrinth of conjectures and assumptions. The motives behind King's decision to support the fragment are still a subject of debate. Her background in religion and interest in unearthing the original Mary Magdalene, coupled with her advocacy for women in early Christianity, suggest a longing for validation of her theories. Perhaps the fragment represented an opportunity too tantalizing to resist. Or perhaps it was a more personal motive. King, like many of us, may have been a victim of her own biases, seeing in the fragment what she wanted to see, not what was truly there. It's a sobering reminder of the pitfalls of confirmation bias, that even the most seasoned scholars are not immune to it. The scandal also laid bare the vulnerabilities that come with prominence in one's field. King's standing made her an attractive target for the forger, Walter Fritz. He exploited her beliefs, her reputation and ultimately her trust. 
The Gospel of Jesus Wife scandal serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance between faith, scholarship and the pursuit of truth. It underscores the need for rigorous scrutiny, the danger of unchecked biases and the perils of misplaced trust. As we traverse the path of knowledge and discovery, it's a lesson we must always keep in mind. Every story, especially one as scandalous as this, carries with it important lessons. The Gospel of Jesus' wife scandal is no exception. It serves as a stark reminder of the importance of rigorous verification in academic research. The pursuit of knowledge, particularly in fields as sensitive as religious studies, necessitates a commitment to the truth, a commitment that can be easily compromised when our personal beliefs come into play. The case of Karen King, a distinguished scholar at Harvard Divinity School, serves as a potent example. King's interest in recovering the original Mary Magdalene and advocating for women in early Christianity likely made her an easy target for Walter Fritz, the mastermind behind the forgery. Fritz, a man with a complex background, saw an opportunity to exploit King's beliefs for his own gain. However, the lessons here extend beyond the realm of academia. This scandal underscores the dangers of confirmation bias. The tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. King's eagerness to accept the fragment as authentic, despite the many red flags, highlights how even the most rational minds can fall prey to this cognitive bias. Moreover, it serves as a reminder of the power and responsibility that comes with prominence. King's high-profile position not only made her an attractive target for Fritz, but also amplified the impact of her endorsement of the forged document. With influence comes the duty to meticulously scrutinize information before endorsing it, as the consequences can be far-reaching. But perhaps the most significant lesson is the power of investigative journalism. It was Ariel Sabar's relentless pursuit of the truth that eventually exposed the forgery leading King to acknowledge the fragment's likely inauthenticity. Sabre's work serves as a testament to the critical role of journalism in holding individuals and institutions accountable. In the end, the Gospel of Jesus' Wife scandal isn't just about a forged document. It's a cautionary tale about the pursuit of truth in the face of deception. It's a wake-up call to scholars and laypeople alike, reminding us of the importance of rigorous verification, the dangers of confirmation bias, and the responsibility that comes with influence. The Gospel of Jesus' Wife scandal left an indelible mark on the world of theology and academia. It began with a startling revelation, a scrap of papyrus suggesting that Jesus had a wife and that women could be his disciples. This seemingly revolutionary finding made by Harvard Divinity School scholar Karen King sent shockwaves through the religious and academic communities. However, as the story unfolded, the truth emerged. The papyrus dubbed the Gospel of Jesus' Wife was unmasked as a forgery, a product of deception rather than historical discovery. Journalist Ariel Sabar played a pivotal role in uncovering the truth, tracing the ownership history of the fragment and revealing the forgery. The central figure in this scandal was Walter Fritz, a man of complex background and questionable motives. Financially struggling and involved in various ventures, he targeted King, exploiting her interest in recovering the original Mary Magdalene and advocating for women in early Christianity. King's decision to support the fragment remains a mystery, one that coincided with a time when Harvard's Divinity School faced scrutiny. Yet it is her downfall that proves the most poignant. A scholar of religion, her prominence in the field was irrevocably tarnished by the scandal. The Gospel of Jesus' Wife scandal serves as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the importance of rigorous, unbiased investigation in the pursuit of truth. It underscores the need for academic integrity, the perils of deception and the enduring power of truth. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of our past, we must remember the Gospel of Jesus' Wife scandal as a testament to the enduring power of truth and the perils of deception.